The number one mistake homeowners make when they make their own living trust is forgetting to fund their living trust. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what funding is, first of all, and number two, why it's important. And number three, I'm gonna show you how to fund your living trust so your trust actually works when you pass away. If you haven't subscribed to my channel yet, hit the subscribe button to get notified whenever I post a new video about living trusts. And by the way, my name is Edmund Yan. I am a living trust lawyer. I've helped hundreds of families and I've taught thousands of people how to do it themselves. And I'm excited today to share my tips and tricks with you. If you wanna learn the entire process, not just the funding process, but the entire process of how to make your living trust the right way without hiring a lawyer, check out my free trust class at freetrustclass.com. The link you can find in the description below. Really quick uh, legal disclaimer, I'm not your lawyer. I'm not giving you any legal advice today. All I'm doing is giving you information. If you have any legal questions, talk to a lawyer. So first of all, what is funding a living trust? Um, you hear that a lot when you are in the process of making your own living trust. Funding is a fancy legal term for transferring. So what you're doing is you're transferring your assets from yourself as an individual and you're transferring it into your living trust. So that includes your house and your financial accounts, like your checking, your savings, your investment accounts. And so funding is a fancy word for saying transferring. And uh, based on my experience, this is the number one forgotten step when people make their living trust, even when uh, lawyers do it for you. Uh, most people, I would say, uh, forget to fund their financial accounts and trust, even when they have a lawyer. And so a lot of times these bank accounts go into the trust. But most importantly, a lot of people, they forget to fund their house into the trust. And so when they pass away, their house actually ends up in probate. So uh, this is a really big mistake. And this is the number one mistake I see, especially when it comes to people making their own living trust. So funding is really important. And like I just mentioned, um, why is funding important? It's to help you avoid probate. Uh, the whole goal of setting up a trust for your family, for your children, is to make sure that when you pass away, your house, especially your house and your money, would not end up in the probate court system which usually takes a year or even more than two years in order for your kids to receive your inheritance. And it, for most states, it costs thousands of dollars. Some states like California, it costs tens of thousands of dollars, especially when you own a house. So your number one objective to uh, ensure that your kids receive an inheritance is to help them avoid probate. So that's, that's the number one reason why you should fund your living trust. Uh, and number two is you wanna make sure that your assets don't go to the wrong people. When, you, when, when your trust does not have a specific asset of yours, like your house or bank accounts, your trust will not control where that asset goes to. So for example, if you want your house to go to one specific child, let's say you have three children, but you wanna leave one child with your house, you need to make sure that the house is inside the trust. Because if, if the house is not inside the trust when you pass away, even though your trust says, uh, my house to my child, uh, that child might not get the house because it's not in the trust. The, the trust only controls what is inside the trust. So for example, think of a trust like a safe, um, like a safe, right? A, like a safe with a lock. Whatever you put inside that safe is protected from probate, is protected from other people and so your wishes will be honored whatever you write in the trust. So if you put your house into the trust, if you put your financial accounts in the trust, then your trust will control what happens to those accounts, what happens to that money, what happens to that house when you pass away. So really important, a trust can only control what's inside the trust. So it's really important to fund the trust to make sure that the right people receive your assets when you pass away. So another question uh, that I get a lot is, how do I fund my living trust? How do I transfer assets into the trust? Today, I'm gonna talk about two big assets that we typically 
put into the trust. Number one is your real estate. Number two are your financial accounts, like your checking, your savings, your non-retirement investment accounts, brokerage accounts, stocks. How do you transfer those assets into the trust? And by the way, uh, if you uh, take my free trust class at freetrustclass.com, I go through all of this in much more detail. Okay, so if you want an even more in-depth uh, training, please check out that free course. So regarding your real estate, how do you transfer real estate into the trust? Uh, really simple, you have to make a real estate deed that transfers it from you as an individual to you as the trustee of your living trust. A trustee is basically the manager of the trust. So while you're alive, you're the trustee, you get to manage everything in the trust, including your house and money. And so you're gonna make a deed that says you're transferring it from you as an individual to you as a trustee of your trust. So when you pass away, your trust will control uh, who gets that house. And so it makes it really easy. Your, your kids don't have to go to probate court in order to receive. So the first step is to make a deed. The second step is to sign the deed and notarize it. And then the final step is to record the deed uh, with the county that the property is located in. Um, so that uh, the title shows that the house is protected in probate, all right? So uh, that's how you fund or transfer your house, your real estate into your trust. Another uh, big asset are your financial accounts. How do you fund your living trust uh, with your financial accounts? Really simple, after you set up your trust by signing your trust, after your trust is signed and everything is done, you're going to go to the banks and you're going to go to each account and you're going to tell your banker, I have a trust now. Can I transfer these accounts in, into the trust or can I transfer this money into the trust? So the banker would, would generally obviously say yes. And there's usually two options. One option would be to um, basically swap ownership by putting your trust name in place of you as an individual. And so the account will stay the same, the account number will be the same, the debit cards will be the same. You're just swapping your name with the trust name. So it's really simple. Some banks like Chase, they don't let you do that. And so you'll have to close down your account, unfortunately, and open up a trust account, which means new account numbers, new debit cards, new checks. Chase is one of those um, big banks that do require you to um, uh, close the account before transferring into the trust. So that's one way of doing it. Uh, if you feel like, oh, that's just too much work, another option is to simply add beneficiaries to your existing accounts. So when you pass away, those people will receive. And if you have a trust, you can actually add your trust as a beneficiary. When you pass away, the trust will take over. So you as an individual still own that bank account while you're alive. However, when you pass away, then it's gonna get uh, transferred to your trust. But if you do that, if you keep it under your individual name while you're alive and you simply add the trust as a beneficiary, there's one more step you have to do. A lot of people get this wrong. I'm gonna give you a pro tip over here, okay? Uh, what if you're disabled? So this is a scenario where, what if you're disabled, let's say you have dementia, you haven't passed away yet, okay? You haven't passed away, so this money still belongs to you, you still have access to these bank accounts, but you're incapacitated, you're disabled. Let's say you have dementia, you can no longer access your bank account yourself. Uh, how do you make sure that the people you trust will be able to access it? If you don't put the accounts into your trust, uh, no one can access it unless you have a power of attorney. Okay, so make sure you have a power of attorney, uh, which is a legal document that says, when I'm disabled, I'm gonna allow this person to access my bank accounts. And also take it to the bank, take the power of attorney to the bank and submit it to the bank. The bank will likely have you fill out their power of attorney forms as well. Um, it's a really important step because if you don't transfer this account into the trust while you're alive, then no one's gonna have legal power to manage it while you're alive, while you're disabled. So uh, to, to get around that, you have to have a power of attorney on that account. So that's like a pro tip. Okay, so uh, again, if you want more details, check out my free trust class at freetrustclass.com. So uh, I'm gonna, go through some common questions that I get uh, a lot of times when it comes to funding. The first question is, what about my retirement accounts? Do those go into the trust? 
generally, okay, I'm speaking generally here. Again, I'm not giving you legal advice. It really depends on your situation. Generally, the answer is no. You don't put your retirement accounts into the trust because of tax reasons. Um, there's significantly more taxes um, involved when it comes to uh, the trust owning your retirement account while you're alive. And number two, if the re if the trust is a I'm sorry, if the beneficiary of your retirement account is a trust, then the tax rate will be uh, higher for trusts as well. And because of a new law called the Secures Act that Congress enacted a few years ago, um, there's rules regarding how long your beneficiaries can keep um, the, the stocks and, and the mutual funds inside the account uh, before they're forced to take it out and withdraw it. And so check with your CPA to see whether or not it's advisable to put your retirement accounts into your trust. If you have minor children, um, generally you have to weigh the pros and cons of putting it, uh, putting the trust as a beneficiary of your retirement accounts. Um, the, the advantage is that when you have minor children, let's say you know you've got a four-year-old or a two-year-old, and you want to protect these retirement accounts uh, just in case they're 18, you don't want them to just withdraw all the money. If, if you're afraid to put them as a beneficiary since they're so young and you don't know whether or not they'll be wise enough to help you, I'm sorry, to manage these funds, if you do pass away before they're 18, you might want to put the trust as a beneficiary. Uh, but if you do that, you need to make sure you understand the tax laws and the, and the tax implications. And so for that, you might need to talk to a lawyer and, and a CPA to uh, give you advice regarding adding the trust as a beneficiary of your retirement account. But a short answer is usually you do not put the trust as the owner or the beneficiary of your retirement accounts. Another question is what about life insurance? Um, again, it really depends on your situation. Uh, for some of my clients, I, I would recommend that you they put uh, the trust as the beneficiary of the, retire, uh, of the life insurance so that their kids don't get a lump sum of a million dollars and spend it all. The trust will control how the money can be spent. It's gonna be managed by their uncle, right? Or someone else that you trust to manage the money for them. And so you might wanna consider adding the trust as the beneficiary rather than your children when, uh, when you pass away for your life insurance. So another question I get is, do I lose control after funding? So for example, if you put your house into the trust, if you put your financial accounts into the trust, do you lose control? Can you still spend the money? Can you still sell it? Can you still refinance the house? Can you still sell the house? The answer is yes. Uh, you're most likely gonna create a revocable living trust, which means that you are in control while you're alive. And so you do not need to worry about losing control over your assets while you are alive. Now, uh, another question I get is, can I refinance my house after funding? I think I just answered that. The answer is yes, because you have full control over your, uh, your property, your house, uh, while you're still alive and healthy. What about my out-of-state real estate? Uh, you can still fund. So for example, if you live in California and you have a Nevada property, you can put your Nevada property into your trust. You can transfer it into the trust. You can do that for, for any properties that you own in any 50 states in the US or DC. You can put out-of-state real estate into your trust. You don't have to create separate trusts or new trusts for, for each state. Your, your, your current trust in your home state will be able to control all of your properties in any state in the US. If you have foreign assets like a property in Mexico, a property in China, a property in the UK, you need to talk to a, a, a state planning attorney in that country in order to plan ahead because generally your U.S. trust will not control what happens to those properties because those states have, uh, those countries have different laws. So uh, another question I get is why didn't my lawyer help me fund my trust? Well, uh, it depends on uh, what kind of services you receive from, um, from your lawyer. Uh, if, if you spent very little, <laughs> On a lawyer, the lawyer's not gonna do it for you. The lawyer probably gave you some instructions, some written instructions, and you probably didn't read it. And so it uh, depends on um, the service that the lawyer provides. At my law firm, I always help my clients fund their real estate and also 
uh, give them a checklist regarding each of their financial accounts, their life insurance, their retirement accounts, um, because you need a clear roadmap as to what to do with each each bank account, each financial asset. Usually, um, there's there's different. Uh, standards that there's different ways of funding for every asset and so I customize the checklist for the clients and then they can schedule a meeting with me like a separate meeting to go through the funding process so make sure you work with the right lawyer that's gonna help you during throughout the funding process okay that's really important when you're interviewing a lawyer make sure they help you through the funding process if you want to do it yourself check out my free trust class at freetrustclass.com and I walk you through it. I also have a PDF checklist that you can download that, that walks you through the whole funding process so you don't make any mistakes. Is it hard to fund my trust? Uh, the answer is no, if you know what to do. Okay, that's why I give uh, my clients checklists. That's why you can download a checklist, PDF checklist uh, in my free trust class uh, course. Uh, it's, it's gonna show you how to download. And so it's not hard as long as you know what to do. Just like everything in life, when you know what to do, it's not hard. You just have to follow the instructions. So the answer is no, it's not hard as long as you understand how to do things. So check out my free trust class at freetrustclass.com. What if I have new assets later in my life? In life, can I still fund my trust? Yes, so if you buy a house five years after you set up your trust or five years, uh, five years later you um, open up a new bank account, you can still fund you can fund for as long as you live. So as a pro tip, educate yourself about the funding process before hiring a lawyer um, and before doing it yourself so that you do it right. So uh, I think, so uh, that's why I, I provide a free trust class uh, for everyone who wants to do their own living trust is there's so many things you have to do when you set up a trust. It's not just um, making a trust and signing it, it's also the transfer process. And so I broke it down into really easy to follow steps uh, in how to make a trust without a lawyer. So check out my free class. I'm not here to sell you my legal services. My number one goal is to make sure that you keep more money in the family and uh, you get that peace of mind to know that you did it right. So funding is so important to avoid probate. So make sure you do it right. So the link is in the description below, freetrustclass.com. Now before we leave, I want to leave you with this Bible verse. Commit yourselves, sorry, commit your works with the Lord and your thoughts will be established. So now you might think, okay, how do I set up my living trust? What are the steps? What am I going to do? Uh, the best thing to do is, is first pray to God because God is going to give you thoughts and strategies and plans in order to help you. Um, he will introduce you to resources. He will guide you along the way to show you exactly how to set up your trust. And also uh, in every area of your life regarding your finances, your relationships, your health, your, your everything in life, God is here to help you. Uh, and the best thing to do is to commit your works with the Lord, meaning give your life to Him. Give your life to Christ, give your life to Jesus, and He will direct your path. He promises that to us and and so uh, you know before I met the Lord I was trying to do things my way I was trying to uh, succeed my own way and that just brought a lot of stress I was depressed all the time I, I even wanted to quit being a lawyer because I didn't feel like there was much meaning in my life um, I didn't have purpose in my life but when I realized um, that God actually wants me to be an estate planning attorney I found out that my name Edmund means the protector of prosperity, which is exactly what I do as a living trust estate planning lawyer. I protect the prosperity and wealth of families by making sure that the kids receive their inheritance. And so when I found that out, that born to be an estate planning attorney, it gave me a whole um, meaning to life, a whole purpose in life that my creator made me to be an estate planning attorney. And sometimes I, I still cry about that, that I know that <clears throat> my God cares about me and your God is my God and my God's your God. 
Like he's your creator, he's your heavenly father. And so I encourage you to uh, read the Bible, pray, get to know Jesus as your Lord and Savior, and he will direct your paths. Um, as a believer, we have God's Holy Spirit inside of us. And the Bible says that when we have the Holy Spirit inside of us, God reveals his thoughts to us and we're able to make right decisions every single time. You can read that in 1 Corinthians. Paul writes that we have the mind of Christ when we uh, accept Jesus as our Lord and Savior. So I encourage you to get to know Christ. I know that uh, he wants you to because your heavenly Father loves you and he wants to do life with you. So commit your works with the Lord and your thoughts, your plans will be established. So I just want to bless you with that. God bless you. I'll talk to you later. Bye.